So when I say I'm done buying clocks for a time, I actually mean it. I am done buying clocks for the time. But if something absolutely incredible comes along, then I will pick it up. But otherwise, right now, I'm more focused on getting tools and supplies to work on clocks. Mostly tools and maybe the odd piece of machinery here and there. That also goes for wristwatches too, and pocket watches. So, you know, I'm expanding my horizons. But today something absolutely incredible came along. It's not necessarily this clock. This clock is great, but this isn't the one. For those of you who've been watching my channel since 2018, you would have seen this clock get quote unquote serviced back then. This palm, this palm dairies uh, ice cream clock here, this ice cream advertising clock, which lights up. And if we get in closer, you're probably wondering why the heck it's on the floor. It was made by uh, Copyright Dairy Products Advertising, Weston, Ontario. Uh, what is that? DES register. Uh, maybe that's, I don't, I don't know what that would be. Uh, fifth, there's a 58 there. Do not use more than 25 watt bulb, etc. And there's a CSA approved sticker. Well, as you can see, this looks... Well, I mean, judging by that 58, is this from 1958? No, it's sadly not. It's from the 70s at some point. Uh, I'm thinking probably 1978, actually, which is probably going to come as a shock to most of you. But for those of you who saw my original series I did working on this clock, then that's no shock for you. Maybe it was a shock back when you saw it, but not anymore. So anyway, this clock has run into some trouble. Uh, the hands won't move. That could be for any number of reasons. So we're going to pull this guy apart again. We're going to probably service this thing again, too, because it wasn't... I'm Oh, boy, the servicing back in 2018, 2019, whenever I got... I think it was 2019, actually, now that I think about it. If you were a viewer in 2019, you witnessed this. But... Yeah, my servicing, I mean, I was more inexperienced than I am now. I'm still inexperienced to some degree, but I know a lot more now than I did then. And hopefully we can come in here and do more than I did originally. So we're going to pull this guy apart, but we're going to look at another clock in this too. There's going to be, this is going to be a series of two clocks being serviced because they're so incredibly similar. So as I said, that incredible find came along. And this one is a is of huge historical uh, significance to where I live, and yeah, it's it's just a local historical clock here. And as you can see, this is a Bulova. Well, it's not made by Bulova, but it's the it's the Bulova seal of approval, if you will, on Bateman Jewelers, which is still open in my city today. Now, what kind of happened here? The story goes that. This clock was sold to, some, I think it was a clock and watch repair guy. I think it got sold to him. Then it got sold to uh, an antique store owner who I know. And this is an early Christmas present for me. So he sold it to me for exactly $100. The motor does not run, well, we don't know if it runs or not. But the hands do not move when you plug it in. And it does light up. Now, some of you are saying, oh, good, Greg, you're cause some kind of idiot for plugging in for plugging in an untested clock, and you're missing your ground, Greg. What the heck are you doing? Yeah, that is true. Um, I don't really know what to tell you guys there. It was just kind of one of those spur-in-the-moment things you'd plug it in. If it was a radio, absolutely not. But it's, uh, it's an electric clock. I guess I'll take my chances on that. And I think, uh, or maybe, I don't know what they would do. I don't know if the antique store owner played around with this thing. I don't think he really did. I don't know. It was just one of those spur-of-the-moment things. Yeah, probably not advisable to plug this in before you even pop it open or anything like that. You can't really trust the previous quote-unquote guy because <laughs> for, for any number of reasons. Yeah, here's, here's, a, here's some words to live by. Don't trust the previous watchmaker or clockmaker. Uh, it, that includes me because I make mistakes too. But uh, yeah, sometimes you got to... I don't know. I, I shouldn't have plugged that in. That was kind of dumb because, you know, this could have been rewired wrong. You have no idea, 
going into this thing. And you're thinking, well, great, what the heck? Uh, how is it similar? Western Ontario. Gee, I wonder who <laughs> associated advertising. Gee, I wonder who uh, who cooked this one up. And if we look in the grills here, uh, we can't see it now. But that, that motor is basically the same. And they seem to be suffering almost from the same problem. Do not use more than 25 watt bulb. Oh, look at that. Associated advertising. Western Ontario. Oh, boy associated gee this is all looking very familiar isn't it this one is more of a higher uh higher quality though this is actually wood i couldn't tell you which wood it is this is steel and yes this when bateman's jewelers first opened or bateman jewelers when they opened i i'm assuming oh i don't want to say the wrong year i'm not sure the the antique store owner told me this clock is from 1950 i don't know when when these guys opened I'm not entirely sure. And I've just discovered that it stands up on its own, which is interesting. Does this have a wall hanger on the back? Surely it does. Okay, it does. Oh, boy. For a second there, I thought, oh, maybe it's just, you know, it stands up like that. But nope. So, well, I guess you can, but that's cool. Anyway, we're going to be servicing the Palm Darius clock again, and we're going to be servicing this clock. Both in the same series. You might as well see them both at the same time. Stick around. We're going to get popping here. So we're going to do this in chronological order in terms of years. So this clock is older, so we're going to work on this guy first. Now I see that our second hand's got a bit of, um, there's a bit of play in those gears. Let's see what we got going on the other side here. Uh, I think how these movements work is the hands unscrew, I think. Yeah, they do unscrew. Now that I'm looking at this, I see a nut in there. I'll show you in a second here. In between, in between the, uh, oh, I'm going the wrong way. In between the seconds hand and the hour and minute hand, these guys unscrew, I think, I hope. Yeah, my local museum would love to get their hands on this. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, that was tight. Yeah, for a second there, I thought this wouldn't come off, but it, it has. So, uh, for the for the terminology of this particular series, we're going to be calling this clock one and clock two, because, uh, I don't know, it just simplifies things. This is clock one, and the Palm Dairies clock is clock number two. So, we're going to put our hand, we're going to put all our, st our stuff in this, well, in this container here. I don't know, clock number one container, and clock number two container, I guess. These, th these things aren't, there isn't that many components in here. And our hands, they come off. There's a nut there. Let's just see. I think this company, I don't know. Again, I know nothing about these. this particular company. I'm going to try and get that nut off of there. I hope you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, as I said, I know nothing about this particular company. Oh, boy. Okay, there we go. Whew. Don't want to scratch stuff. Yeah, I don't know nothing. I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I guess I don't know nothing. I don't know anything about this company. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine as to what, you know, like all I know is what's on the tag, basically. And the, and the quote unquote dates that people have given me. Here's the, here's the, uh, hour hand square. What's it called? Square insert, square hole in there. And this guy comes off too. Yep. Oh, I thought this was glass. This is plastic. Definitely a, a kind of a, <laughs> I know I'm, say, I'm saying, look at this magnificent piece of local history. I Literally a budget cut right there. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I don't care. Uh, Canadian clock making is just one giant budget cut after another. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. I love to have fun with these things. Yeah, no, th this stuff from the 50s, you know, so you get all kinds of wacky stuff is riveted together. Stuff is pressed on. Uh, you never know what the heck you're going to find when you come in here. And I see there's square screws along this. So I'm going to want to take those guys off. I, the, there's two kind of, I don't know what those are called. Those are some kind of bolts or something uh, on there. We're going to take those guys off. This is all very bare bones, say. Eh? And really, I shouldn't say that about Canadian clock making. This I've just looked at kind of the later half of it, like 1900 onward. So haven't haven't really looked at anything 
before that. So I shouldn't say it's one budget cut after another. At least later Canadian clock making, you have stuff like this. This is honest. Th I mean, this is <sighs> the thing with these electric clocks is people treat them like appliances. So I mean, I, and and you're probably wondering, Greg, what the heck does that mean? Uh, in my di uh, vocabulary or dictionary of of different terms, treating something like an appliance means you absolutely never service it unless something quote unquote breaks, and you know where that you know where it runs something into the ground basically, and then the quote unquote service man. Well, I shouldn't say quote unquote because it really depends case by case basis. The the quote unquote competent individual. Will tell you that you that the things run into the ground that you should go throw it away and buy a new one so you know the, this this is probably absolutely never worked on even though it belonged to a uh jewelry store where they work on watches and clocks i think actually i don't know if they work on clocks now that i'm thinking about it the place is still open and the sign in the window says watchmakers that's not clock making okay we can lift this off now no dead flies or nothing. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's... I don't know who can see what, but I'm just going to try and... Here, let's just actually be smart about this and just put this down here. And here is the wood frame with our plastic insert. Okay, this is definitely not from 1950. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It seems like dairy products, or at least this company, seems to be absolutely really good at uh, making clocks that look like they're they're older than they are. And that dial, I'm just gonna I'm trying to think of a place where it won't get hurt. Uh, I'm gonna have to stick it. Not sure where I'm gonna put it right now, actually. Now you're thinking, Greg, are you disappointed? No, that wood frame is really nice. Uh, that might not be, yeah, as I said, that might not be as early as, as we think it is. And I know that's the very typical of, of a lot of antique stuff. And if we look at this, this is very bare bones. We've got two light bulbs here. There's our movement right there. This is the same movement as the Palm Dairies clock, it looks like. Warranty is void if this label is removed. I don't think we'll have to worry about that. February 5th, 1973. Is this from the 60s, I wonder? Hmm. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you there. I'm not, I really am not sure about that one. How old this thing is. Uh, there's a date code on this. This thing looks absolutely filthy, right? Because no one ever services this stuff. Uh, again, a treat, treated like a quote unquote appliance. 33 929. I'm not sure what that's all about exactly check our move we're getting very close to just looking at the movement here so we're gonna we're gonna know here right away what's going on with this thing so we're just gonna undo that there we go and there's those two bolts on the back there this is much easier to disassemble than the palm berries clock where the thing is literally partially made of cardboard i'm not even, I'm not even kidding we're gonna get into that though in in uh probably a later episode so there we go. There's this. I don't, I, uh, what I'm going to do is try my absolute hardest to not pull all this wiring apart. And I see those lights are riveted in. Okay. Yeah, it, this is just... This, you can see what's going on here. So we're going to try and remove the motor from this. And there's two Phillips head screws there. So this thing can't be that old if there's Phillips screws on this thing. And let's just, I want to see this thing run. Actually, you know what? No, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to try. And yeah, no, sorry. I keep changing what I'm going to do. There are two Phillips head screws. I'm going to undo those. And you know what? I'm using my wrong screwdriver for that job. Okay. We're going to totally, yeah, we're going to serve. Well, try and service. It looks like it's riveted together, sadly. So there's that screw there. This is very simple, guys. If you've worked on any other previous clock or anything like that in your life, I guarantee this is already 20 times easier than that. 
use a big screwdriver hey guys like you don't want to strip this i don't want to strip any threads or anything okay we're going to be very careful though just in case anything decides to fall out nope so there's our riveted together gear train i know right local historical significance what the heck greg oh uh good news well actually not good news but good news this thing looks like it's seized up so chances are that's why it's not running if we power this up again the wiring looks okay there if we power this movement up chances are that motor might actually start for us here so for those of you who are into cars and watch those videos of of cold starts we're gonna have one of our own right here in the greg Ola basement and if we just plug it in and the power is not on yet so what do you say boys three two one action absolutely nothing even one of our bulbs is out <sighs> oh after playing with the bulb it came back on okay uh the gear train is seized up and this motor does not want to move and actually i shouldn't say our lights are riveted in uh, because I've just had a look, and, uh, what in the world? Is this some kind of hot chassis type thing? Sorry, I just gotta look at this for a second. What kind of wiring is that? That's live. Now, you're probably wondering, Greg, what are you complaining about? This is a piece of steel there, isn't it? That's a piece of steel. This whole thing is steel, and I'm not gonna get electrocuted if I touch this. Okay, that's b bizarre. Uh, we're probably going to pull all that out. Anyway, our motor isn't running, so let's let's figure that out first before we do anything. Sorry, guys, that makes absolutely no sense to me, how, that, how that's even possible and how that's remotely safe at all. Yeah, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I think what we can do is i'm thinking here try to possibly i don't know take these guys out or at least get our clock motor out of here now this is all one sealed unit hey so this is this isn't coming up well at least i don't think it's coming apart anyway uh yeah hmm what can we do here there's not, there's not much to work with. There's no kind of screws to undo or whatever. It's all very, very closed up. Kind of like a Telecron rotor. And how do we... Tell us, Greg, how did you, how did you fix a Telecron? Sticking it in the oven. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Literally baking it. This might have to be baked. Might have to be baked, guys. Have you ever made a cake? We're about to cook one up. Or up. No, we're about to make a pie. That's what we're about to make. Okay, uh, enough messing around. Let's take these bulbs out of here. This is so... All of this is so dusty. Ooh, what the heck happened on the base of that guy? I don't know what happened there. Is this 25? I don't know. We might replace those with LEDs uh, later. If we get this thing fixed again we're having this having this crazy design here uh do those sockets okay how does this we might have to actually take the sockets apart on both uh or maybe we, i don't know if we will or not hmm yeah that's the thing right you only want to bake so much of it you don't want to bake the whole thing uh Yeah, let's get those sockets off and try and just detach all that from it. As you can see, I'm not really, I don't really care about all the dirt on, on this thing. What the heck? Is that screw? Oh, I'm using the wrong screw head for that. And sorry, you're watching this from a very weird angle, guys. Here, let's, oh yeah, and we'll worry about this later. Actually, I'm gonna stick that in the bin or in the container. So what are my what are my thoughts? 
Uh, this seems a little late, don't you think? This clock? Definitely not 1950, I don't think. So, again, that's... Hmm. If we can repair this, we will be legends. Of course, I can't actually get my screwdriver in there because it's too short. Now, we could get very kind of salty about the whole... About the way this thing is designed. That is way too big. And we could just complain and say oh what a bunch of cheap crap I don't work on this type of stuff and I understand the the desire to do that but really you know there's so many of these things out there and I'm no fortune teller and I don't plan to be one but I've already found two of these things what <laughs> who's to who's to call me wrong for thinking that there's probably going to be quite a few of these in my future yet. I don't think this is the last time I've run into this particular thing. So, at that point, it's like, well, you might as well try and figure it out. You know? Am I even using the right screwdriver for this nonsense? Oh boy. I, I can't record that. Or maybe if I actually do it from the right angle, uh, we can. Yeah, it's very easy to get, to get salty about this, but really... You know, it's all in the adventure, isn't it? Is that riveted on? You don't even give me a screw on that one, do you? Oh, I think these are both... Oh, shoot. I think these are both screwed on or riveted onto these. Or maybe they're not. Oh, my gosh. Did this... Maybe there's no... I don't know if there's an electrical connection issue happening here, maybe. That's an incredibly improbable thing going, like you know, to say, oh, there's some kind of electrical issue with it, but I don't think that's a problem area. And plus, even when, you know, the clock motor wasn't working, it was still getting power. You could still hear it vibrating on the case. So there was something going on inside of it, but clearly I think the old oil inside was too great for it to uh, actually, you know, move. Yeah, I'm thinking this thing was so gummed up inside that it couldn't even... It tried to move, but it just couldn't do it. And I think these screws, there's screws inside the sockets here. Yeah, that's, oh, okay, that's how you get these out. Oh my goodness. I was scared there for a minute that uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't get these out. I was very concerned about that. Uh, but it looks like it's okay. Looks like it's okay enough in that sense. So that's terrific. Whoa. Greg, are you gonna replace the power cord? Uh, we're gonna see about that, cause I'm not, there's some wiring here. I'm not entirely sure how to replicate. I don't think it'd be very hard. I guess I'd have to learn, but off the top of my head, I've got no idea. And, I'm, and if you're wondering why, if you're wondering why I'm on the floor right now, it's because I dropped a screw. So here I go again. Yep, this is the whole procedure. We're getting the exclusive. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'd replicate that little section there with that extra bit of, I don't know if you can see me playing with it, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how I'm gonna do this uh, later. But the, the main idea, is to get all of this nonsense out of the case. Oh my gosh, there's a there's a strange leaving grommet in the way. Uh, okay, you know what I've been doing here? I've just been thinking about what I'm getting into here. And you know what? I think it would be smarter on my end if I actually stopped this here, switched to the Palm Dairies clock. Because if I go, if I keep going with this, I have to play around with the wiring here and you know i don't know if this motor like if you've seen my telecron clock series tele alarm junior you'll know that i actually put the rotor in the oven because this is like this is in two parts here there's like a gearbox down here and there's the actual rotor up here if i can unseize this and i see there's pivots there which chances are those need oiling uh oh does this hold the phone Whoa, 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 back up. Does that face come off of that? 
I wonder, guys. It looks like someone tried to get in here, actually, at one point. Sorry, I just totally lost my train of thought. I was going to say, uh, you know, if the oven, if baking it in the oven, like I did with the Telecron series, doesn't work, you know, I don't want to have to at least not deal with all this wiring everywhere. Because you can see I'm, I'm pulling this apart. Might as well deal with that clock first. Because I know how the wiring was laid out in that. And it was very simple. It was all done with wire nuts. Versus this, where I'd be desoldering and, and, and playing around with different things. But I wonder if pivot... I wonder if I can oil the pivots on this a little bit. I wonder if that would help at all. Or try and get the thing open. Might not have to put this in the oven after all. So I angled this in such a way where I've got the actual motor out of the case. And... I'm thinking I'm going to try and get the front of that open and see where we get to. But because these video, I don't want these videos to be stupid long, guys. So I'm also going to end it here. But don't worry. I'll try and get that next part up ASAP. Maybe there'll even be a double upload. I don't know. But anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.